The doctor is in. Hi guys, it's Dr. Sal from DrSecrets.com. Thank you so much for joining in. Today we're going to take a look at diverticulitis and diverticulosis. Now first off, these two terms, even though they sound so similar, are not synonymous. Diverticulosis is the disorder which leaves you a sitting duck to developing diverticulitis. Diverticulitis is the actual active villain that actually causes the symptoms of pain and suffering and so forth. So to understand diverticulitis, we first have to understand uh, diverticulosis and how it occurs. So the story of diverticulosis occurs in the colon, this part of your body. So if you consider um, that your mouth is up here, your swallow pipe runs down here, you have your stomach here, that then leads to a duodenum, which is like a C pipe. Then you have a smaller skinny pipe, um, which is very active, called a small bowel, small intestine, ileum, whatever you want to call it. And that little skinny tubule, uh, uh, the job for that is basically to extract most of your nutrients. When it arrives here, as you can see, it faded in here and attaches onto this big uh, tube here, the colon. This colon section is um, basically just like in a sewage system or, um, or in a garbage truck. You're trying to compact and compress um, the, the products of digestion into, uh, into a more compact form of what we would then call stool. So as the stuff is moving around here, uh, water is being extracted slowly all the way around here. Eventually the stool is formed and it uh, resides here in the rectum waiting for ejection back into the environment. Now, uh, as you look at this um, illustration here of a colon, what you notice is that it has some nice smooth little undulating waves in it. Uh, but for the most part, it's a pretty smooth trajectory. In diverticulosis, on the other hand, compare this illustration. Notice all the pockets, the caves, the, the little blebs all over this um, disease colon here. We believe that this occurs because modern diet is um, too soft. Our lives are too sedentary, our diets are too soft. There's not enough roughage um, in our colons and that causes the muscles to misbehave or become disorderly in conduct. That then leads eventually to these little um, herniations. These are like little micro herniations of muscle all over the place. And these pockets, this process is called diverticulosis. The problem with all these little pockets let me see if I have another illustration here. Oh, uh, yeah, you can see it here. This is muscle here. This is a protrusion of the lining of the intestine through the muscle. So it's pushed its way out, causing this uh, cave formation here. So the problem with that is um, food coming down, this chute, uh, has a propensity to go spelunking into these little caves and lodging into these little caves. The problem with that is the colon wasn't designed for permanent um, collection and retention of, of feces, it was meant as a conduit where it eventually passes through all the way. And then new stuff comes down and pushes its way through. When, if, um, if fecal matter comes in here and arrests itself inside of these pockets and does not um, find its way back out, it festers in the area, eventually causing an inflammatory reaction. That then snowballs, uh, causing uh, sepsis in, in the entire area. So it becomes almost a systemic problem. So the manifestations from that uh, process occurring are uh, things like bleeding. So the lining gets so irritated that it starts losing blood into the intestine. And you'll see that coming out in the feces. Um, pain, obviously. Fever. Um, loss of appetite. All those symptoms are active diverticulitis. Itis always meaning a uh, Greek to do with inflammation. So the diverticula has converted into diverticulitis. <clears throat> All right. Now, um, treatment. Uh, a lot of resources I've come across have um, poo-pooed the idea of avoiding um, things like popcorn and small seeds. Here's a illustration of popcorn. But in all the cases, in my personal experience, where I've come across with somebody who's recently suffered a, a bout of diverticulitis, um, and I inquire on their preceding diet, like within the, f the last week or so before developing the symptoms, I often come to the conclusion from them that they were uh, gluttonizing on some of these uh, products. 
the problem with these products here is um, not so much the roughage because lack of roughage is what causes um, the diverticulosis in the first place. The problem is that these, um, these small seeds and popcorn kernels, the problem is that they leave after mastication, after you chew them up, they still leave lots of little hard particles. Um, and then those hard particles uh, are unable to be digested, so they eventually end up being directed right into the colon and then f find their way migrating into these different pockets, which then um, they get lodged and cause inflammation. Why the studies and research um, right now suggest that uh, these foods don't make that much of a difference, I suspect it has to do with the research uh, process. Maybe they're asking people what they eat or ate um, prior to actually developing diverticulitis rather than actually asking individuals who have just suffered diverticulitis what have you just recently eaten I'm not sure all I can say is that in my personal experience I found that there is um, it's more than just urban legend these foods do seem to irritate uh, people uh, suffering with diverticulosis anyway that being said in terms of treatment um, if somebody comes into my office with um, a lot of uh, symptoms that su suggest to me uh, diverticulitis especially if they've um, previously had say like a barium enema or some kind of a CT of the colon which had already demonstrated that the, the individual was suffering with diverticulosis it makes it very easy to pinpoint and um, come to the conclusion that that's what they're suffering with with their uh, digestive disorder fever pain and sometimes uh, rectal bleeding the the treatment for simple cases is uh, basically um, bed rest, digestive rest, so try to just eat a very bland, simple diet, and a uh, course of antibiotics. With the antibiotics, I usually use uh, double whammy. Um, so I usually use two antibiotics together. One would be ciprofloxacin, the other is uh, flagyl. I'm not going to go into the reason for that, but it's basically to be able to cover a wide spectrum of bacteria because some bacteria in the intestine um, are oxygen philic. Uh, oxygenophilia, the, the light oxygen, and others of them um, are anaerobes. They don't require oxygen for metabolism. So you need to cover both um, both miscreants because you don't know which one you're actually dealing with causing the um, infection. Um, in very severe cases where individuals uh, can't stop bleeding or their colon looks diseased like this and they're having recurrent bouts of uh, diverticulitis, uh, surgery is sometimes an option where what you'll do is you'll basically just cut out the disease section, the segment, and then anastomose or basically reconnect the two uh, pieces that are fine. You take out the disease segment, put the two good pieces back together and stitch them up together. That um, I would say that's relatively rare. Most cases are one-off, one-shot deals. Uh, a person might go along for another 10 years before having another bout. Um, so usually antibiotics um, by mouth orally is usually what's necessary. Sometimes in a little more severe cases, they may need to be admitted to hospital, um, get a drip and suck. So basically we give them fluids through an IV, take, take a fluid off their tummy, and um, give them intravenous um, antibiotics. And then for the really diehard severe cases, then there's a surgical option. So I hope that uh, demystifies diverticulosis and diverticulitis for you. Uh, that's, that's the very basics in a nutshell. Uh, thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe so I can keep you updated of new videos as I upload them. And uh, please share this with anyone who you know of who may be suffering with this condition to help clarify in their mind what's uh, wrong with them. So once again, have a great rest of your day and thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Get notified of new videos. Subscribe now.